tell me, do you guys make some, some of the packaging for uh, injectable diabetes and weight loss drugs? Well, we, we can't talk about uh, any specific customers, but uh, what I can tell you is that, indeed, uh, we supply elastomeric components for three of the GLP drugs uh, that are on the market, and clearly um, consumers are very excited about it, patients and our customers are very excited about it, uh, securing future supply, investing. We ourselves invest uh, more than $180 million in our own capacity for biologic drugs, including GLP-1 drugs. Wow. I mean, you guys, I think about your business the last couple of years, and you had to go, you know, okay, go quickly make tons of hand sanitizer. Okay, now pull back on that. Okay, now go quickly make tons of supplies for the GLP drug. I mean, how, how, do you, how does your business respond to all of this? Well, we've really been around for almost uh, 80 years, public uh, for 30 years. So um, we really are, if you want the intel inside, uh, all of your viewers have a dozen of our product at home from spray on sunscreen to upside down ketchup to high end fragrances and also unfortunately Narcan. So it's all about delivering medicine, delivering consumer products to the consumer in a way uh, that makes brands more enjoyable and the drugs more available. Yeah, the upside down ketchup might be the single greatest uh, innovation. <laughs> makes makes my family life a little easier. Um, but put that in context for us. So huge demand, for instance, in this uh, weight loss category. Where else are things softer now? Because we know consumer goods and durable goods more. Well, not that they're durable goods, but that this is an area of softness lately. Yeah, actually, overall demand for for our products is very strong. Uh, the pharma business, whether it's nasal sprays for allergies or, or inhalers or uh, sinus uh, rinses. So anything the consumer has learned during the pandemic uh, about uh, keeping their sinal, sinus passages clear has really changed the consumer behavior. Our beauty business is actually very strong because of pickup of travel retail. The one area where we see weakness is in the U.S., food space and personal care and home care. Partly that's because, uh, you know, patterns have changed uh, coming out of the pandemic. And part of it is our customers and retailers still working down their tremendous uh, COVID inventories. That's interesting. So in personal care and home sort of things in particular, and that echoes what we've heard from other companies in that business. How you think you have another year or so to normalize things there? Well, we, we see food starting to normalize. Uh, we believe personal care, home care probably will run their course by the end of the year, early next year. Thankfully, I don't say it as often, uh, our business is 75% uh, outside of the U.S. <laughs> and uh, travel retail really, especially between the U.S. and Europe, is, is boomed in uh, driving our beauty business, high-end fragrances, makeup, skin care. Uh, and of course, um, uh, pharma is uh, global and uh, the U.S. Uh, patients and U.S. consumers need the pharma products, whether the economy is doing well or not. That's fascinating. You guys really do have a, a really unique win. And like you said, it's not often you say it's a good thing. We're 75 percent outside of the U.S. What about China? Any exposure there or any kind of secondhand exposure that could tell us what's going on with trends there? No, China is an important market for us, uh, you know, uh, for some of our segments, like beauty. It's actually the largest uh, mar beauty market in the world. Wow. And a lot of the, the sales that we report in Europe are really going to global beauty brands like L'Oreal or LVMH, who then sell their products on to China. Clearly, the recovery is more muted than uh, people had hoped and expected, but even uh, lower growth on a large base uh, makes a big difference. And... Uh, uh, we have start, just started up uh, one of our flagship investments in Suzhou, China, and opened two plants in the north uh, in the dairy area during the pandemic. So we continue to be uh, see China as an important market, and thankfully we are not in any geopolitically sensitive areas. So we are right. uh, seen as benefiting the Chinese patients and consumers. Yeah, so far makeup is not on the list uh, yet of, uh, of highly sensitive industries. Um, before I let you go, can you talk to just briefly about the labor force? I, I have to imagine between some of the slowdowns you've cited and everything else that you're not seeing the same staffing challenges you've once had. But um, is there any sign of kind of wages reversing lower or anything like that? No, but uh, clearly the issues uh, we talked about last time have abated. We saw more people joining the labor force. And those plants, particularly in the Midwest, are exactly the ones producing the things that are weaker, personal care, home care. Uh, so this is no longer an issue. And thankfully, in the booming areas like pharma, we have plenty of capacity. You never want to be out of Narcan. Oh, my gosh, that's for sure.